Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the Inland Northwest. Simply in the genes. It's simply in the genes. Genes, yeah, that's it. This extraordinary collection of art dramatically illustrates the artistry of these three Spokane women, a trio that shares much in common including some jeans. <laughs> no, not those kind, but rather these kind. You see, Dee Dee McKay, Kay O'Rourke, and Gina Fruin are all members of the same family, the McKay family. Raised on the fertile wheat fields of southeastern Washington, the McKay family appeared to be your typically large Irish-American farm family. But by virtue of its uniquely abundant artistic talent, the McKay family over the years has developed into a family that's far from ordinary. This is a family where today, five of its nine members are artists, three of which are professionals, including Dee Dee McKay and two of her five daughters, Kay and Gina. The profusion of artistic ability found in this one family is indeed remarkable. The question is, where does it come from? Is it mere coincidence, or is there something more? I had an interesting experience. I was working at Whitman College in the gallery there, and this was when I was in my 50s. And this man walked in, and he told me he was my cousin, and he's a nationally known editorial illustrator, Norman Adams. And, uh, and then he told me about all these artists that go clear back for generations. In fact, we all had a family art exhibit together, and I met these relatives, but the reason I never knew about them was a divorce between my grandparents, and my mother never ever told me about them. And uh, so I, I'm saying that it is a genetic characteristic. Well, I think that that is, that there is some genetics, genetics to it. I think that, um, that your combination of all of your your relatives contribute to what you are right now. So there was that love of education and of books that we got from my father's family and a love of gardening. And then this, this, this artistic sort of creative bent that we got from my mother's side of the family and I think it sort of combined into what, what we are. We're not exactly the Andrew Wyeth family, but <laughs> apparently it was there. And you know, my mother's mother did paint china plates and that is an art form, and that is a creative thing. Whether the McKay art legacy is inherited or not, it's clear these three women share a common gift, the gift of creativity and the need to express it. Working out of her basement studio in North Spokane, Dee Dee McKay's creative gift often finds expression on canvas. I don't know if anybody paints with their fingers with acrylic except me. At the age of 69, Dee Dee's art career is just now beginning to flourish. Why so late? Well, after raising seven children and operating two art galleries, she now has the time and quiet. You need the quiet, and it's just amazing uh, how it comes forth within you and tells you what to do and, and what inspires you. It's something you can't explain. As a socially conscious and active person, much of Dee Dee's work is inspired by the social issues of the day. In recent years, many of her symbolic acrylic paintings have focused on one issue in particular. If I, somebody were to ask me what was important to me in my life, uh, is try to, to leave the earth a better place by my having been here. And uh, what I see, the overpopulation and what's happening, and then when I read a book on the Zuni Indians and where these ancient prophecies predicted the pollution on our earth, they called it gases rising from the earth. And from that I did a painting and having man look back at the earth through the Indians' eyes because they do have an inborn genetic reverence for the earth. Uh, I think we take it too much for granted and we need to care about it. Maybe if we start taking care of the earth, we'll forget about war.
Not far from Dee Dee's studio, tucked in along the scenic banks of the Little Spokane River, is the cozy basement studio of Kay O'Rourke. Like her mom, Kay's creativity has also been drawn to the canvas. Yet while she may use the same medium as her mom, Kay feels their paintings are distinctly different. Not because Kay uses oil paints instead of acrylics, but because of her approach. I think we, you know, we, we come from some of the same sensibilities, but we approach our work completely different. I feel my mother, uh, her work, she's trying to make more of a social statement, uh, more of a universal statement. Uh, I work completely from personal experiences, my own personal emotions. So I would say my work is very narrative, extremely narrative, and probably extremely uh, personally narrative. Um, if you were to come down to my studio from year to year, you could tell what had been happening in my life during that time, if you really paid attention. For Kay, her vibrant oil paintings will always remain her passion. However, since moving out of the city and back onto a farm nine years ago, she has allowed her creativity to spin off into a totally different direction. The result? These popular wood sculptures. The wood pieces are all about the animals that live around here. Most of these are all pine, and I use pine and willow. I use a lot of natural materials. I've collected bees' nests and things like that. I never thought of them as really as art. I did them just because it was kind of fun, and I played with them, and they were kind of a nice relaxing break from the, the paintings that I was doing. I, at first, I was a little uncomfortable with it because um, I really wasn't very good at working with the wood. You know, I'd spent years being a, becoming the best painter I could be, and yet here all of a sudden there was a demand for something that I didn't do well. And so that was, I had a conflict with that, but I don't now because I have fun doing them and they're, they're a nice break. Just a half mile upstream from Kay's art studio is the airy daylight studio of Gina Fruin. It's a studio void of easels, paints, and canvas because unlike Kay and Didi, Gina's creativity is expressed with clay. I think I like the immediacy of it. The painting, you know, it takes a month to finish a painting and geez, I'm bored after three days with it. And the other thing I liked about pottery is it was different from what my sister was doing, what my mother was doing, you know, so it was sort of my own little niche that I could, could pursue and do something really fun and, and this would be me and that's them and that's them. My work sort of rides the rail in between painting and functional pottery. Um, the shapes are, are just a, in, a, in evolving of the bowl shape or the vase shape or the pitcher shape or the teapot shape. I'm, I think they have a tendency to be a little sculptural because I like to be playful with them. While it is true this talented trio of artists all come from the same family, their work is nevertheless well refined and completely their own. I don't feel like because you're the same family that your work should necessarily all be the same because we're all very, very different. So everybody works the way they work to, to relate to their media the way they have to relate to it. That's a thing I don't think people realize. We're all individual and of course we, we're all very proud of each other's work. And they should be because after all, it's in the jeans. <laughs> if you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.